this is Joseph. I'm at ALA 2015, the annual conference on behalf of Becky Hilburn's art processing blog, Keep on Trucking Out of Soup. If you could introduce yourself, Jeremy. I'm Jeremy Whitley. I'm the uh, writer and creator of Princeless, um, along with uh, writer of such things as uh, Pirate Princess and uh, My Little Pony occasionally and uh, other stuff. <laughs> okay. And what's bringing you to ALA? It's primarily a um, book convention, I, I guess you would say, since um, it's for the majority of the audience's librarians, but there's also a few teachers here and that sort of thing. Um, do, yeah. do, are you debuting a book here, or it's just uh, another convention slash conference on your, your schedule for the year? Uh, this is our this is our first time at ALA. Um, it was okay. recommended to me very highly by uh, a couple of other folks who do uh, sort of all ages and, and young reader books, like uh, Chris Schweitzer. Um, yeah. So, uh, you know, we, we figured we'd give it a try um, and, and see uh, how Princess does, and it's uh, it's worked out really well because we have a lot of uh, we've had a lot of great feedback from uh, librarians and teachers here who you know are, are very excited about the book. Okay. And um, you're the writer for Prince Less. Can you tell me some of the inspirations behind the book? How did it get started and how long has it been running? Yeah, uh, so it, it started out as, um, it was the sort of thing I was looking for. I, I was looking for something that uh, you know my daughter could see herself reflected in that would have positive female role models and be led by a you know woman of color and um, just really have uh, you know female characters with agency in it. And, um, sure. I, I didn't feel like there was anything out there that was quite what I was looking for, um, so I, I kind of started it with uh, with Princeless, and uh, it's been going on for uh, a little over four years now. Okay, and um, I'm sorry, I'm not that familiar with the work. Is it also a webcomic, or it's uh, strictly traditional uh, form? Uh, well, it's available digitally through you know Comicsology, but it's uh, it's not on the web, uh, right. other than you know it's kind of all all over Tumblr. Uh, but <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, as, that's as a, a web comic, control yeah. sometimes. Yeah. Well, I'm 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 perfectly happy to have it out there. It's it's nice to uh, have your fans sharing things. Yeah, have people yeah. sharing things. Have people that are, are passionate about stuff that they want to share it with other people. Okay. And is it a? Um, do you have an ending set for the comic? Is it a? a an overarching story that you're trying to tell, or it's just like a continual episodic sort of? Um, a little bit of both. Uh, we've got sort of an overarching story about uh, Adrian saving her sisters, and she has a finite number of sisters, uh, so, you know, it's... <laughs> Can't go on forever. Yeah, that, that story will end, but uh, we would like to, I mean, I'd like to keep writing it for forever if I can, so, you know, uh, I've, we've got some other stories that we've worked on, some other things that uh, we want to do with it, and, sure. um, you know, in the future, we definitely have places to go if uh, we get to, if we finish book seven and we still want to keep doing it. Okay. And what specifically uh, uh, took ALA into the spotlight for you? I know you said um, Chris uh, recommended the show for more of an all-ages audience, um, yeah. but what, what other types of conventions and conferences have you done in the past? And um, how, how might you compare them to your experiences at ALA so far? I know it's only the, the first main day, I guess you would say, for artists. It, yeah. it was open yesterday briefly. But. Yeah, it's, um, it's interesting because I, I do a lot of comic conventions. I do um, you know, Heroes Con in Charlotte. I do Awesome Con in D.C. I, you know, I've been to New York and San Diego and a variety of other medium, large, and small shows. Um, but... Uh, ALA is, is different in that it's um, less of a, an urgent attempt to sell things to people as so much as to sort of get the information to people so that uh, you know, hopefully the, the thought is not so much that I can push my book on the person here as that uh, library they're, they're interested enough in it that they go back and they order it for their library and you know it, uh, it can reach you know that audience of kids that's already in the library that you know we want we want to read the book. Right, so a lot of your pitch has changed a little bit for the show and that you're more just trying to get people interested in giving them a takeaway rather than necessarily saying, well, buy my book right after you finish the pitch, basically, right? Yeah, it's, uh, you know, I, I did Heroes Con last week and that's very much like, uh, it's like the, that, that sale is the end goal. And, yeah. um, you know, if, if you don't sell stuff, it's sort of a, a running, Tab of you know, all right, I'm this much behind. I need to sell this many more books to 
to come out ahead. Yeah. Whereas uh, here, it's it's not. My it's worry not as isn't so much how successful you are, like yeah. directly at the end of the show. Yeah. Yeah, my worry isn't so much selling off you know a handful of copies to people as um, you're getting people interested enough that they remember and, and go back and recommend it to you know their to other librarians to kids in the library things like that. So. Okay. And how did you get started writing comics? Um, so I started off uh, writing things that aren't comics. In, uh, in school, I uh, did a little playwriting, short story writing, novel writing. Uh, I graduated with a, a degree in English and creative writing from uh, the University of North Carolina. Um, and then I remembered that I really liked comics, and I figured out that somebody must write those. Yeah. Um, so I kind of figured out, you know, why, why don't I try? And I, I launched a couple of different... Uh, you know, massively unsuccessful attempts, and then uh, <laughs> Princeless sort of hit the right spot in that I think it was something I was looking for, and it was something a lot of other people were looking for as well. Yeah. Um, and, you know, that's sort of, I, I started doing that, and I I love writing comics, so I, you know, wrote for some other folks as well, and uh, it's gone really well. So. Okay. And uh, do you, when, when you're at a show like this, are you also looking to connect with other artists to try to work on additional product projects with them oh absolutely uh, not specifically la necessarily but i find that um uh, a, a writer has a little bit more bandwidth i guess you could say whereas an artist might be working on one or two comics at one time a writer can potentially work on um three or four i, I guess you would say i'm not sure the exact numbers but uh so how how do you um pitch your your writing i guess to artists at a at a show if you are looking to take on additional projects yeah um do you I just think, say flip through my comics, see you know if, if you're excited about the writing, or um, do you try to tell them about your process? And most of the artists I end up working with are, are people that I um, I already know, or sure. um, I've I've made some sort of relationship, or I've worked with you know freelance stuff before. So um, in a lot of cases, uh, hopefully they've read my stuff by the time that I um, you know, come to them and, and say you know there's something I, I'd yeah. like to do. Here's I think your ma- your style would be a good match for it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's um, it's a variety of things. It's I try to meet people and connect, and then you know, eventually, hopefully, that turns into to other stuff. So yeah, so just being a part of the community, basically, and hopefully it'll work out. Yeah, I think it's uh, I think there's a tendency in comics, and I, I'm the same way to find stuff that you like that other people are doing, and kind of talk about that as well, and co-promote things, and yeah, um, it's very like. Uh, Rising tide lifts all boats, kind of thing, you know. So, um, yeah, whatever whatever sex, uh, success I have, I can sort of uh, help promote the other stuff that I like, and uh, other people have been nice enough to do the same for me. So, yeah, it's good. Um, so, what's your? Uh, do you have any upcoming projects that we can look forward to? Um, so, Volume Four of Princess is coming out currently. Uh, the first one uh, came out in June. It'll run June, July, August, September. Uh, yeah. We're doing our uh, First Princess spinoff, which is called uh, Raven the Pirate Princess, which uh, starts in July, um, and that'll be an ongoing series. Um, I've also got a uh, short story from Marvel coming up in August for uh, their Secret Wars, Secret Love anthology, and um, then I have, uh, in September, I'm doing all of the My Little Pony books, which is only two, but I'm I'm doing both of them and starting a big, like, four-issue arc in uh, Friendship is Magic that month. Exciting. Yeah, a lot of a lot of stuff coming up. Yeah, yeah, it does sound like it. Um, and we can find all that at your website. Yep, uh, you can go to. Um, I'm, I'm really easy to find on Twitter. It's uh, J R O M E five eight. So it's J Rome five eight. Or uh, Tumblr is uh, princelesscomic.tumblr.com. Um, or I'm also at uh, jeremywhitley.com, which is my slowly being developed website. Sure, I, I hear that a lot, so don't feel bad about yeah. it. Um, so, would you have any advice, finally, for uh, a comic writer such as yourself who's considering, who, who might have um, a few books published, who's considering attending uh, ALA annual conference for the first time? Uh, yeah, I would say if it's, uh, if it's something you can afford to do, which is, will depend a lot on where you are and where it is, because ALA yeah, moves. It changes every year. Um, yeah, then I would definitely say if you can afford it, it's a, a great show to go to. Yeah. Um, you know, there's no there's no immediate table cost. It's just you have to donate a piece of art, which uh, is I think is great. Yeah. Um, but they really seem like they're doing their best to support the artists and um, the yeah, absolutely 
they've uh, they've been really supportive so far, and I I don't see that stopping. So yeah, yeah. yeah they're doing great. Okay. Um, and it, it appears as though Emily is busy right now, but can you tell me a little bit about uh, some of the um, artistic angles that uh, the direction you've you've given Emily uh, for the comic? Did, yeah. did she well, just I don't know. Do you want to? We volume? can switch. I don't wanna <laughs> 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 um, but, yeah. Um, I uh, Emily and I have a lot of conversations about uh, what we want to do with the series and yeah. um, sort of talk through it and talk about um, where we want things to go, what things should look like. You know, we, we try and make it as collaborative a process as possible. Okay. Um, you know, I, I usually include a lot of ideas of what I want things to look like in the original script, but uh, a lot of that changes between the script and the, the finished page. Yeah, sure. That's natural. Yeah. Okay. Well, I hope you have a good ALA. Thanks so much for talking to me. Thank you.